All right, hello everyone. We are back, and I am going to be doing a guide for you all. And what we're going to focus on is kind of just making adjustments on last uh, divisions tournament. So we are going to set up our bag accordingly, and we're going to stick with Apocalypse here. The extra curl is going to help you for this hole. I'm going to set up my bag more for accuracy. Just, you know, kind of go with my standard bag. These are the clubs that I like to play. I'm always giving myself a little bit of length with my rough iron and sand wedge. And let's just go ahead and get this underway. Let's see where we're at here. People are starting to do this, but not very efficiently enough. Be nice to know where everything's going to be. But let's just get this underway. And uh, I'm going to do some corrections and certain holes. Maybe I'll do a little bit differently than I did last time. Um, other than that, you know, I'll just make corrections on, for example, on holes like the par threes. So let's take a look at this first hole. As you guys probably remember from the yesterday's round, that, uh, you know, there's no real length ball shot for this first hole. It's pretty much a layup. Um, so what I tried to do is just try to position it out there in the middle of the fairway somewhere for a nice uh, sniper shot and just try to get a little more honed in on what I want to do with the, uh, you know, the spin and everything and especially for the tee shots, you know, positioning, make sure that you're putting it in a nice position to uh, give yourself the best chance to get the eagle. So, let's see what we got here. I've been second every time I've played this hole so far. So this is a nice different approach. Nothing that I'm going to do. Uh, I think it's a little unnecessary. There's no, there's no real maximum that you can, you know, hook it around there. I'm, I mean, my shot, my shot gets it around the corner more than that hook does. So, but you could hook it a little bit more aggressively on my line, and probably pop, uh, pop it down there quite a ways. But uh, you know, I don't see a lot of uh, advantage to doing that. So you're just going to see me use more, what is that, almost five top spin, full side spin, and just kind of go at it full. And I'm just trying to basically, you know, visualize, you know, notice how I rotate the screen and I'm just visualizing 10 rings down, making sure that it still hits the fairway. And that's going to be my intended target line. And there you can see, great ball, not going to, uh, and that's one of the reasons to kind of stay away from that edge. Um, just to kind of safely put you out down around the corner somewhere. Like I said, you know, you could hit a full hook, uh, slice shot, and probably get a little bit more aggressive than I even do and get more out into the center of that fairway um, with even more top spin. But at the end of the day, it's not really going to, you know, make or break uh you know, your chances one way or the other of getting this hole. So whether or not you're going at it with long iron or sniper, in my opinion, so backbone versus sniper, there's very little difference that I see in terms of quality of shot. Um, you still have to, especially on a side wind, um, you know, if it was more of a straight wind, yes, I could see the advantage of getting up to, uh, you know, backbone to kind of keep it out of the wind a little bit more, but uh, on a side wind, it's going to be hard either way. Um, it's going to have quite a bit of cut spin that you just kind of got to estimate as to how much it's going to do. 
So here you can see we're very close to max backbone range today. I believe I was at Sniper yesterday. So you can see that uh, you know the method that you're going to have to go about doing this may change depending on how far you want to drive it. You can probably lay up a little bit intentionally if you want to uh, you know, safely put yourself in position to uh, have a consistent approach. But here you're going to see me go at least max adjustment, which is, you know, nine rings. I'm actually going to overplay because I'm in power. So I'm going to go nice full ten rings there. And let's see what that does. Still, still severe underplay. See, then this is just kind of what I'm mentioning about, uh, you know, Yesterday, I think, yesterday I'm almost positive I had a sniper, today backbone, and trying to figure out, you know, the differences between the two clubs is going to be rather challenging. I mean, I went a full ring more than I needed to, um, plus just a, just a tiny small adjustment, maybe to the left of the hole, and it was still, you know, three rings, um, about three rings short of where it needed to be in order to... Uh, I was going to make that shot so honing in on that uh, pin can be a little bit of a challenge um, and it's just one of those things especially when you're into power you really you you, you got to kind of throw max distance whatever that ring adjustment is out the window because you know if you just go your max adjustment there and say, you know, only go the nine full rings, which would be pretty much spot on max max adjustment that you're not even going to be, you know, in the proximity. And you can see that with my shot that, you know, you still have to go an extra, especially on a sidewind, it's at least an extra three rings when you're in power like that. So, and it's even worse if you're on a berserker ball. If you're at like plus 16, plus 17 on a berserker ball, Forget about it. It's like, I remember we were playing hole five last tournament. That's that new Juniper par five. And, uh, you know, if we had, if I had a Berserker ball with, it was like a 14.6. And if I had, uh, you know, plus 17, plus 16 on the Berserker, um, where I'm starting my setup, with a backbone, it was like 20 ranks. Like it was, it was just sick. And uh, you know, it just took me a couple of times to just kind of hone in on it a little bit. But the problem is, is you can't ever usually consistently get it to the same spot. So you kind of have to just know how to do a little bit of everything. Because the next time, you know, you might only be plus seven. Then the next time you might be at max distance. So you need to know how to kind of play all three scenarios. And the same thing applies here. So, you know, it's best to almost probably keep notes on this kind of stuff. That's something that I never do. I just kind of, you know, have it all upstairs, just mentally. And that's why you'll see sometimes, you know, I'll just make a lot of mistakes in terms of, uh, you know, if I don't have exposure to a certain shot in, say, you know, a week or two. I might just be a little bit less on the adjustment or a little bit over on the adjustment. And it just takes one or two more just for fresher courses just to get a little bit more honed in. So hopefully, you know, you guys can give that uh, a good run for that first hole and be on the lookout for hole two coming up here.